no single answer to the question, but in my opinion, it must rest on a fundamental respect for the dignity of human rights, of human life. And not only that, it must also be based on an awareness of our responsibilities individually and collectively for upholding that respect. <coughs> human rights must become a societal reality. It must guide our actions, not only our functions. So let us start with the founding document of what we consider to be the internationally recognized human rights standards, namely the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted by the General Assembly on the 10th of December 1948. The Declaration stands in a very exclusive succession of documents, very exclusive succession of, of, of documents that have brought humanity forward, each adopted after a dark chapter in world history. To put it very simply, <coughs> this is how the English Bill of Rights came about in 1688 how the French Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen came about in 1789, and the United States Bill of Rights in 1791. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights came about with the explicit, explicit reference to the immense atrocities during the Second World War. The authors of each of these historic documents had a civil war or a revolution, a war of independence or a world war as their immediate experience. It is as if people woke up after these bloody nightmares and wanted to create a better world <coughs> where everyone should be committed to a stronger protection of the human life. The preamble of the Universal Declaration and its Article 1 gives us, gives us so to say, the world view <coughs> of contemporary human rights that is shared by at least most human rights scholars and activists. This worldview is often taken for granted, so the text is seldom quoted or known. So let me therefore read it to you. It goes as, as, as follows, the, the preamble and article 1. Whereas recognition of the inherent dignity and of the equal and inalienable rights of all members of the human family is the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. And whereas disregard and contempt for human rights have resulted in barbarous acts which have outraged the conscience of mankind and the advent of a world in which human beings shall enjoy freedom, speech and belief and freedom from fear and war has been proclaimed as the highest aspiration of the common people, and whereas it is essential if man is not to be compelled to have recourse as a last resort to rebellion against tyranny and oppression, that human rights should be protected by the rule of law, whereas it is essential to promote the, develop the development of friendly, friendly relations between nations, whereas the peoples of the United Nations have in the Charter reaffirmed their faith in fundamental human rights, in the dignity and worth of the human person, and in the equal rights of men and women, and have determined to promote social progress and better standards of life and larger freedom. Whereas member states have pledged themselves to achieve, in cooperation with the United Nations, the promotion and universal respect for and observance of human rights and fundamental freedoms, Whereas, the common understanding of these rights and freedoms is of the greatest importance for the full realization of this pledge. Now, therefore, the General Assembly proclaims this Universal Declaration of Human Rights as a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations to the end that every individual and every organ, organ of society, keeping this declaration constantly in mind, shall strive to strive by teaching and education to promote respect for these rights and freedoms and by progressive measures, national and international, to secure their universal and effective recognition and observance both among the peoples of member states themselves and among the peoples of territories under their jurisdiction. Article 1. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. 
they are endowed with, with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in the spirit of brotherhood. I think it's a wonderful text indeed. I didn't know how, I, I don't know how many times I have said to myself, if only the member states of the UN had lived by the words that they had committed <coughs> themselves to. The challenge for the realization of human rights today is not so much to get states to sign human rights conventions, but to get them to take responsibility for implementing in practice the moral commitments they have made on paper. They must be held responsible for protecting the integrity of the personhood of everyone and the living under their jurisdiction. Because this is the principle on which all human rights conventions rest. We must constantly remind our politicians that as long as they have political power, they cannot escape these responsibilities. So we must read them the text and explain what it implies to represent a duty bearer in this, in this context. Because what states are, they are duty bearers of human rights. This is the great uh, new development with the Universal Declaration. We must remind people that the Universal de de Declaration represented this great leap forward in the sense that the fundamental rights of every individual now became a legitimate concern of the international society. In principle, this meant <coughs> an important limitation of a government's power vis-à-vis -vis the inhabitants living under their jurisdiction. <coughs>